Hi you guys, we are in Mississippi. We are on the Ross Burnett Reservoir and just having a great time and we thought, what a perfect spot to do a video. <laughs> and so we just want to share some goodness as to the peace of God of what my husband wrote for scripture this morning. Yeah, it comes up John 14, 27. That says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives it to you. Let your heart not be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Uh, this verse just really struck me this morning because I just think with everything that's going on between COVID, uh, unemployment, um, political unrest, and just all the different divisions that we're facing in this country, a lot of people are losing their peace. And one of the great things about God is that I believe that he knew that we would have circumstances in life that we would face. And he wanted us to be assured that we don't have to be fearful. We don't have to be fearful of COVID or anything else that's happening that we can actually have and receive God's peace right now. Uh, and I think this is the one, of, one of the things that God wanted to set apart with believers. You know, with the world, their peace comes from outward circumstances. It comes from having enough money. It comes from uh, having life kind of roll for them in a way that makes them happy and feel joy. Uh, but you know, what's interesting is that with God, our peace comes from internally. It comes from uh, his love, his kindness. It comes from uh, his presence in our lives. And so that way the outside circumstances shouldn't have the negative effects of us of robbing us of our peace. And obviously that can be really difficult to comprehend sometimes because of the circumstances that seem to be against us, right? We have unexpected things that constantly happen in our lives that we don't necessarily know or can plan for. And so when turmoil happens, it's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to happen. We have to know who holds us together, who is ultimately sovereign above all things above all the things that we think is in our control because yeah. ultimately it kind of makes us face the fact that nothing is in our control yeah and i think god allows uh, certain things that happens in our lives to remind us that we don't have any control and that he's who's seated seated on the throne and that he's always in full control because I think when circumstances happen, I think it's natural just because we're human beings to start feeling the stress and anxiety and the pressure of the moment or whatever it is. You know, we get a bad report from the doctor says that we have stage four cancer. You know, obviously in that moment, we began to lose our peace. And so I believe that God wrote that in his word to remind us that he is our peace, that he is Jehovah Shalom. And I really like another scripture that kind of brings this together where it talks about he keeps him in perfect peace. It keeps his mind stayed on him. And so what God is saying to us is that as soon as we get that bad news, as soon as we start feeling distraught and losing our peace, then we put our mind on Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. And we put our minds on him. That gives us a reset and it puts us right back in the middle of God's peace where we're supposed to be. And in the scripture it also says, seek peace and pursue it. A lot of times we don't know how to pursue peace or think that that is something that we can pursue. And so what we have to try to do is try to say, okay, if this doesn't calm my mind, if me thinking about more of what I cannot control brings me more anxiety, mm -hmm. well then how can I pursue peace? We literally have to go after it. Yeah, because I think when we, we focus on the problem instead of more than we focus on the solution, the, the solution is going to always be Jesus. You know, we don't have to have all the answers, but we trust him. You know, at the end of that, that, that verse I just mentioned about uh, he keeps him in perfect peace because he keeps his mind stayed on it. It ends with because he trusts in him. And so that's what God wants us to do. He doesn't want us to just say, God, I trust in you. He wants us to prove it. And we prove it through those negative circumstances in life that we all are gonna face if we're not facing it right now. And we say, God, I don't know how you're gonna work this out. I don't even know what's gonna happen, but God, I trust you that you said that you're faithful and you remain faithful, God, even if I'm faithless, even if during this situation, I'm afraid and I'm fearful, even if I'm like worried, 
God, you say that you remain faithful. So we have to put our trust in God. We put all, we push all our chips in and we say, God, I believe that you have this. You know, you are a way maker. You, you know, you can make a way where it seems like there's no way. Uh, you can turn that diagnosis around that the doctor may have given me. And so what an awesome opportunity to grow our faith in the midst of trying times of what we're facing today to say, God, I receive your peace right now. God, I have that peace uh, like a river, uh, that this calm river that's flowing. That's the kind of peace that God wants us to have. He wants us to say, you know what? No matter what's going on outside of me, my outside circumstances in life, no matter what's going on in this world, this country, God, I receive your peace right now. Because we have this hope, we have this anchor that we have in Jesus that he'll never leave us nor forsake us and he'll always make a way that he's working all things together for our good and for his glory. And so that's why it's so important for each of us to always get into God's word. This is what the Holy Spirit wants to use in these trying times or whatever we're going through. The Holy Spirit wants to remind us of God's word. And so this way, when we are reminded of, we're like, that's right. Jesus is my peace. I don't have to get all shook up and frustrated and, and, and get stressed out. Um, I can just say, God, I trust you. And so God, help me to receive your peace right now. Help me to receive your joy, your comfort and your love. And I know, God, that you're working it all out. Yes. And when you had said that our hope is anchored, right? It's anchored in Jesus. And it's the anchor of our souls. And knowing that that is where our emotions are held. That's where every thought of our inner being, he knows about. And so in order to just continue to cast your cares onto mm, him who can sustain good. you. That's right. It's really going to be the key because otherwise we look for that validation from others we look for the validation from our our doctors our friends our spouses but really mm -hmm. he is where our hope lies in yeah and we really have to think about on the opposite side of what's happening and this is spiritual warfare you know that, that that satan he's a liar you know what he wants us to do is have that fear um, and so he tells me it's not going to get better. Uh, you're not going to get the finances that you need. You know, your life is over. He wants us to worry and get stressed out because he knows that when we do that, then that pulls us away from God and pulls us away from his word. And so he's always going to be on the other side that's given us that doubt. And that's why even still, along with God's word, surround yourself with other people who can encourage you. We should all have somebody that when we hear bad news that we can call and say, you know what, this is what the doctor said, so I need some encouragement right now, I need some prayer right now, and that you have someone in your life that can really pray over you and really give you the word of God so you can be encouraged. And it's just beautiful. That's what God, that's, that's the one another that God talks about in the Bible. He always wants us to bless one another. Um, and so I don't know if you have some people in your circle like that, but I'm glad that I do. Uh, my wife and I are probably our best friends with doing that. When she gets some bad news or some stuff, she calls me and we pray about it. And I do the same with her. I say, I need to talk to you right now. This is what's going on. Because at the end of the day, we're all human. But because of Christ, um, we uh, have this anchor. We have this resource that the world doesn't have. And so I just want us to be set apart. I want us to have the peace that God has called us to have, what he's left for us. I'm just so grateful that we have a God who, 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 who foreknew saying, my children are gonna need my peace, that they're gonna have circumstances and situations that's gonna happen in their lives, that they're gonna need my peace. So you know what? I'm gonna leave them my peace. And even in that passage of scripture in, in John, right before that, He's talking about the Holy Spirit. He's talking about sending, giving us the helper and the Holy Spirit. And I don't know how your communion is with the Holy Spirit, but I'm telling you, it's everything to the believer because the Holy Spirit encourages us and inspires us. It uh, corrects us. It convicts us. It prays for us. You know, everything that God wants to accomplish through our lives is through uh, the indwelling presence um, and direction of the Holy Spirit. And so we're just so grateful that we have a God who's given us everything that pertains to godliness, a God that uh, loves us in a way that we can accomplish all the purposes that he has for our lives. Yes. So we hope that, like a river, <laughs> that you guys yeah. 
enjoy this piece, <laughs> right? And um, remember whose child you are because he loves you and he takes good, precious care of us. And so as we tell you to receive God's peace, we say peace. <laughs>